What's going on my Studio Life land lovers and welcome to the first episode of this mini series. This is a blossom tree as you can see these are the roots and you've got the branches behind me and to the left of me is a massive tree trunk and each piece is going to be moulded separately, cast separately and then put together once everything is in the right place. So it's going to be a feature piece and it's gonna try and um, capture and turn heads because it's gonna act as a parasol, uh, as a wedding venue at a wedding table. So it's gonna be a centerpiece to the center of a table. Um, it's gonna have a load of foliage. As you can see in some of these branches, you have holes where fake foliage is gonna just be glued in or resined in and it's just gonna look like this really nice artistic tree uh, which is gonna blow minds. And I cannot wait to get started on this piece. Um, so the first things first is we need to um, degrease this uh, piece because it's made of wood. Silicon will stick to anything and everything unless you uh, put a release agent on it, okay? Um, as you can see, it's on an MDF board and this is gonna be the base of the tree. Um, but first things first is to de-grease uh, it, put a release agent on and then we'll get cracking. Okay guys, so what I've got here is just this clear natural furniture wax. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. It just needs to create a barrier between the piece and the rubber itself and put it on fairly light because what you don't want to do is take away any of the detail that you put onto this particular piece. Uh, so we're just going to put a light coating all over the sculpture and as you can see it's got this wax in so they've infilled all of the undercuts and locks and they're the things you really need to stay away from uh, because you will then if you if you keep them you'll need to make a multiple part mold um, which is fine if that's the look you're going for but in this particular case he wanted to fill it and give a real nice suggestiveness of the tree itself uh, but I'm just going to give it a light covering with wax all over the piece, get it right in the nooks and crannies because that's where the rubber will lock in. Okay, cool. So now we grease this puppy up. What we need to do now is think about where our locators are going, okay? So what I'd like to do is I would like to make some locators for the jacket to locate to when we get to that stage out of clay and I'll explain why we do that in a moment but we're going to make these clay squares or circles if you like about a centimeter thick and we're just going to place them on the outside of the mold about fists width apart to give it a nice spacing so let's get to it When you don't have a rolling pin, makeshift circular devices. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So now we've rolled out our clay, I'm going to actually cut some squares out of it, um, probably about Let's just see, shall we? I'm gonna go about an inch wide, an inch square, I'd say. So we're just gonna cut some slices down like so. All right. Get it nice and even. And these are gonna be your locators. And it will make sense later on down the line. But firstly, we must put these in place. Otherwise, you're gonna do a lot of cutting at the other end. We get two out of that. Beautiful. So now as I mentioned, we are going to be placing these little puppies around the outside of the sculpture, about two fingers apart from the piece itself. And uh, these are gonna act as your locators. We wanna do it about a fist width apart so you've got enough around the piece to hold the mold in place. Um, 
and these are going to be covered in rubber. So as we pour the rubber over the sculpture, we will build ourselves like a little moat, if you like, around these. So when the rubber falls down, it fills this void and it doesn't spill everywhere. And that's one way of saving some silicon. So what I'm doing now is I'm just rolling out the clay and as you can see I've put my buddies down and um, I'm rolling out some clay into some long sausages because what this is going to do is going to act as a barrier to stop any excess rubber being unwanted. So we're going to pop this around the outside and it's going to create a barrier so that we can have all the rubber fall down and not get wasted. So all I'm doing now is I'm just pinching the edge of the clay down to the wood so that it creates a watertight seal because once rubber finds a way out, it does not stop. And for those of you that know, you know what I'm talking about. There we go, beautiful. So hopefully now guys, it is starting to make a little bit more sense of what we're trying to achieve here. So the bottom of the mold is gonna have this flange of rubber, which basically holds its shape. If you didn't have that and the jacket went on top and you wanted to cast the piece, the rubber would just be flapping around in the wind and you just, you wouldn't be able to get a decent cast from it. So what we try and do is ensure the rigidity and the stability of a mold by prepping everything you possibly can do at the beginning to make sure that it's a very durable, strong mold and that it holds its shape and lasts a long time. There's nothing worse than building a mold where you can only get one cast from it and then you've got to start all over again. So now I'm just gonna pinch down the edges to create this lovely watertight seal. And then once I've done this side, I'm gonna go over to the other side and make it a nice flat edge so we don't get any undercutting when the rubber's poured in. So I'm just gonna take my spatula like so, and as you can see, it just seals up this edge between the board and the clay. So I'm just gonna smooth that out. And if, uh, if your prep work looks neat and tidy, generally it will work neat and tidy. And that's how we like to operate, is just by making it nice and smooth from the get-go. Beautiful. Just smooth off the top here. So as you can see, ladies and gents, we've made this moat around the sculpture. So hopefully now you can envision when we do pour our rubber on, and the rubber drips down, it will then pull into this area here. The rubber will then fill up and cover these little buddies here. And when it's time to put this, the fiberglass jacket on this, we will remove these clay buddies and then the resin will fill that void and it will create a location uh, lump on the jacket, which will then slot into the rubber and hopefully hold that whole mold in place. So gang, now time for the fun part. We are going to be pouring our silicon onto our sculpture and what I'm going to be using is an RTV 128 uh, and you can get a variety of different silicons. You can get the Celestic 3481, uh, but I like to use the 128. Um, it's a five to one ratio. The 3481 is a 10 to one ratio. This particular catalyst goes off quite fast. So if you're feeling a little less confident on rubber application, then I suggest you go for the fast cure catalyst, which sounds crazy, but this is a super fast catalyst. Um, and it's a five to one ratio as opposed to the 10 to one. So if you do the 10 to one, it goes off a little bit slower, but this stuff uh, tends to go off a bit faster, which is great if you're a little bit more advanced. So I think for this particular size piece, I'm gonna mix up about five to 600 grams um, into my bucket here. As you can see, I'm just gonna tear these scales. I'm going to pour the silicon in through the bucket. Mm -hmm. 
Okay gang, so now we've mixed this up and it's this lovely green, baby green color. Catalyst comes in all ranges of different colors. I mean, you can get your reds, your purples, your blues. The dye isn't really necessarily the important part. The dye has been, it's been put in there so that you can see where you've been. So if you need to do two or three layers of silicon, it's kind of handy to have one red, one blue. Because if you see some reds peering through the blue, you know it's not thick enough. So what I'm doing now is now I've prepped everything and you've got your buddies in place, you've got your moat on there. What I'm doing now, this process is called the flow coat because it just flows through the piece collecting all of that lovely detail of your sculpture. So the first thing I'm going to do is we are just going to start brushing this on. All right, so I'm just going to pour some rubber onto the sculpture and then I'm just going to brush this on into all that lovely detail. Okay gang, so now I've put all of my flow coat onto the piece. It's filled up the moat as I said, and it's covered these little buddies. And as you can see, I've just let them sort of skim the surface, just so that if they were covered, you'd struggle to find them. But once these are then ready to be taken out, you just peel away the top, remove the clay, and you're left with a little void. And then when the jacket's time to be put on, we then fill these voids up with thick resin and we layer fiberglass on top. But before we do any of that, once this has gone off, we then need to put our shim on the piece, our dividing line. So that being said, we can't really do any much more today. So I'm gonna leave it there until the next episode. If you guys liked what you saw, um, tune in next time. So um, that about wraps it up. See you soon.